Okay, I'm ready now. Lamont, you ready? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not ready to record. Oh, I need to be modest. Lamont. I'm a modest kind of guy. Just kidding. I'm ready. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Lamont and my favorite colors to wear is blue and red. The Superman colors. And this is Leia. 80% of my wardrobe is black. <laughs> and and you you're tuning in to the Lamont, Lamont and Leia podcast. podcast. <laughs> so Leia, this week is you. It's your baby. Yes, it is. Um, yeah, I'm the one who came up with this week's topic because uh, the topic of modesty is something that has played kind of a significant role in my life in different ways. Um, but it's taken me a while to write this one because as I was writing my notes uh, and like the outline and stuff, I kind of felt like I was being too preachy. And that's not really the point of this podcast, you know, like um, we really want to teach about the different subjects that we talk about and like share our opinions on them so that you, you, our listeners, um, can like take what resonates with you and come up with your own op opinions on stuff. Uh, and so because I didn't want to be talking at anyone, I decided to look a little more into the subject of modesty using good old social media um and i'm starting to see that i'm right and wrong <laughs> in some <Interesting>. ways <laughs> yes so um this episode concept has kind of been a whole whirlwind <laughs> Yeah. So for for those of you that don't know, we were actually supposed to record this a few weeks ago and Leia was like, I need more time. I need more time. So I was like, take more time. I was actually trying to get her to include some old church friends because like I know they all like struggled with modesty growing up because mm -hmm. um, it was like hammered hard, actually, where yeah. we grew up. Yeah. But we'll probably talk about that. Maybe a little bit. Um, Let's just get started. I mean, we don't have a guest, so we don't need to take yeah. time to introduce him. We're just going to jump right into it. So, Lamont, what do you think modesty is? Because I've started to formulate my own opinions, but I want to hear from you. Yeah, so I don't think I really have a definition of modesty. Um, I guess I'm going to make one on the spot um, from everything I know, like... It is maybe an agreement on how one should look and behave mm -hmm. when around others. Usually these agreements are taught in childhood mm -hmm. and enforced by our parents. Yeah. Um, where, where did you learn about what modesty is? Like, I guess my mom, because yeah. when I... <laughs> When I was younger, I was naked all the time. <laughs> and so, like, they were like, you you can't go naked outside. You have to Why? put on clothes. <laughs> right? Like, you have to put on clothes. You have to cover up. You can't go mm -hmm. naked. Company's coming over. I need you to put on clothes. Mm -hmm. Like, so definitely, like, family and my mom, yeah. for sure. And do you think that your view on modesty is religion-based? Like, do you think it takes, like, is rooted in religion? Or I feel like you... it definitely plays a part. Mm -hmm. It definitely plays a part. And now that you're, now that I'm thinking about it, Leia, like, when Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, which is not an apple. We actually don't know what kind of fruit it was. Yeah. Sorry, tangent. <laughs> um, they ate the forbidden fruit. They were aware of their nakedness they were totally naked before but they became aware and they became a shame and they got leaves to cover up yeah. so i think it definitely has to be somewhat rooted in our religion even though i feel like in my family it wasn't like god wants you to cover up mm -hmm. or you have to cover up for god it's just like don't be immodest people don't want to see that yeah <laughs> 
All right. That makes sense. Um, do you think that over the years, your perception of what modesty has changed at all? A little bit, a little bit. So I've always had this kind of idea that if I was a girl, I would have a banging body. (laughs) And even though I would, like, cover up all the significant parts, I would wear tight-ass clothing to show off all my assets. I actually don't know if I would be that kind of girl, but I kind of feel like that's the kind of girl I would be on the inside. (laughs) As a guy, um, I know I was ashamed of my body, especially when I started gaining weight in my midsection, so I definitely wanted to cover up and wear looser clothing so Mm. it didn't expose my um belly but i feel like if i had muscles like really nice muscles Mm -hmm. i thought i would ever really work hard to get super nice like abs or whatever Mm -hmm. (laughs) i think i probably would wear tighter shirts actually actually i have a tiktok that's funny as if i can find it i'll show it later okay all right um so i'm gonna answer these questions now for myself do it um where did I learn about modesty like you? My mother, um, in my family. Um, so when I was younger, we were Catholic, but not very good Catholics. Like I did not know this. Yes, we were Catholic. Um, but not very good Catholics. Uh I don't know, we like barely ever went to church. <laughs> Um, so I don't really know if the modesty I was taught was religion based because culturally no one cares. <laughs> like people walk around here, their babies walk around here butt naked, no one cares. Like it's it's not a thing. We have a body, who cares? Yeah. Um when you're but, a baby, you got you got it made, like yeah. no clothes, <laughs> like it's all um good. But as we got older and my mom changed uh, her religious beliefs, I would just say changed her religious beliefs, but like discovered new beliefs or I don't know how to phrase that, that, but you kind of know what I mean. Discovered discovered new beliefs that fit more with what she thought. Yeah. Um, So as she started doing that, I noticed that her rules on what was expected in terms of dressing, not like we're that's pretty much all we're talking about today is like dressing like your fashion what you're wearing um but her rules for that started to get a lot more strict over time and more modest um like i've mentioned before my mom was a hula dancer a professional hula dancer um so her showing her body wasn't uncommon like even at the house it wasn't like expected of us to like cover up completely all the time. But as I got older, I noticed that like it started to be more common. And I don't know if it's just cause I was getting older or if she herself was changing her views. But um, yeah, so like that's how I learned of modesty and that's how I started to see differences and whatnot. Uh, So I do believe that the change was religion-based. I know a lot of Catholics are pretty modest. So I think the fact that we weren't very strict Catholics (laughs) plays a role in why it was like, okay, whatever. But as we became more Seventh-day Adventist, where modesty is, you know, very prized (laughs) in the religion, um, it started to be more and more. Yeah, like, Leia, growing up, I never saw your mom uncovered. I don't think I've seen any part of your mom ever. And it got like, more and more, like, yeah. um, because I know you switched church, so you didn't see her as often um, over the last couple years, but she started to cover up even more. Like, oh, wow. even outside of church, she wouldn't wear anything that was showing off a lot of stuff. And I'm not saying, like, showing off, like, oh, she's dressed in sexy. But I'm talking about, like, you know, women have breasts. Most women have breasts. Mm-hmm. And even if we're wearing a shirt that's even slightly low cut, you can see cleavage for the most mm-hmm. part, especially if you're larger breasted. Like, it's not a sexual thing. It just happens. She would even stop wearing shirts that came down low enough to see any cleavage. All of her shirts started going up. All of her hems started going down. And, like... 
it was very very strange for me <laughs> yeah. because i remember yeah. i remember being a youth kid and we used to have what do we go it was saturday afternoon and we would go to like ay ay it was called yeah. ay yeah and then adventist youth ay and um i remember like lecturing the girls she would make a lot of their clothes mm -hmm. but she would also like if they didn't have like if something they were wearing something too low or too mm -hmm. revealing they had to wear like something that would go behind that yeah to cover it yeah 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 so um yeah i really do it was so strange like especially looking back on it now just the difference from like when i was younger to even just a few years ago it's like completely different <laughs> Um, and talking about change, I do think that my views personally have changed over the years. Um, but only slightly because a lot of the re the ways I would dress when I was younger was really just because, you know, I was living at home. That is what my mom expected of me. Um, so I did it. Uh, mm -hmm. now I wear whatever I want. <laughs> that must be nice. But also you're on an island that's warm most of the yes. time and i feel like they have di different cultural expectations there. yeah and actually we're gonna get into all those things but um in terms of my views on modesty definitely has changed slightly over the years i think i'm a little more open now but in like some aspects a little more closed i don't know i feel like when i was younger i was trying to show off more and now i just wear what is comfortable to me and getting busted and getting yelled at and lectured and like you can't go out of the house like that <laughs> so. of course do you remember the lamont and leia show episode we did about fashion i vaguely remember that did we do like it's popping it's popping yes that was like the whole yeah. thing on the episode i um, i i barely remember that yeah so I went back and watched the episode, and we do talk about modesty very briefly. I thought we talked about it a lot more than we actually did. We probably but. did off camera and, like, all of the other things. Like, we only had 10 minutes to get yeah. everything into the episode, so. Yeah, so um, I was looking through it, and something did stand out to me, and I'm going to share this image with you real quick. All right. So, <laughs> this is frighteningly a little slut shamey <laughs> all right well let's not slut shame anyone but i like, know so me. this is what we wrote in 2000 i don't know oh, nine ten something so dang it <laughs> i'm so sorry for the people who are going to see this but uh forgive me <laughs> we wrote this don't dress to excess come on seriously why must we all dress like whores we wrote that yes uh, be you know what we, we we've apologized like in the very first episode but we're gonna apologize again <laughs> because we were heavily like obviously heavily influenced by our religion yes and i think it is a very common idea in most christianity based religions not just seventh-day adventism but in most christian religions you are seen as less than if you dress a certain way <laughs> which i really don't believe in so yeah i think that's where that was coming from <laughs> okay. okay but um i think that's good insight to like the first thing i want to bring up all right um so different reasons for modesty uh, the first one being religion. Now, I can't really speak for religion. The different religions that have, uh, you know, different concepts of modesty, like Mormonism, Christianity, Catholicism, even Muslim, Jewish, you know, all of these different religions have different rules that they must abide by. And, you know, I can't really speak on any of that because i'm not in any of those so if you are of any religious denomination that has you know modesty codes 
and you decide to abide by them. It's not my place or my, you know, right to say anything. <laughs> because that's you. You do you, boo-boo, you know? That's true. Um, I always felt like um, when I was younger, the the women, I think the Islamic women that had to cover their like hair and their face, I always felt like they were oppressed. But um, not all of them feel that way. Some of them do. But not all of them feel that way. And some of them feel like it's honor and stuff. And then some some do it for protection. So, like, yeah. um, I say do keep you safe, first of all. Do keep you safe. Second of all, um, if you view it as honor or as part of your culture, as something that you really value, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And I know there's a lot of people out here. I say out here. I meant, like, out there in general who view people who dress modestly for their religion or their culture as like, oh, these these people need help. They need to be free. But, you know, it's not really our place because it's not our religion. It's not our beliefs. It's not our culture. If they want to do that, that's up to them. Like, that doesn't mean anything besides that they value something. Um, yeah, so most of the stuff I'm going to talk about today is not going to be under the guise of religion or cultures that do that because yeah not my place not my business um another reason for modesty and this is something you brought up earlier lamont is comfort and practicality <laughs> so a lot of more modest clothing tends to be looser which we all know is comfier i mean we've all literally been living in pjs and sweats for 2020 so like <laughs> yes love it like we even if i have to put on a nice shirt i'm in like shorts oh uh, yeah right now i'm still in my pj shorts <laughs> uh, right now i'm in shorts so. <laughs> um so it also has like practical uses in our day-to-day -day lives so uh going back to the low cut tops um you know, sometimes if you're wearing a lower cut top or a looser top, um, if you're taking your sweater off, sometimes it gets caught in there. That happened to me a few times in school. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, and, yeah, so if you're wearing something that's covering up a little more, you don't really need to worry about that happening. Or if you, like, bend over, like, things are exposed. Um, or if you're wearing shorts or skirts you know if you bend over they might show something or if you're a guy if you sit down your shorts are too low you know stuff might pop out <laughs> it's true i love when stuff pops out actually <laughs> um or even like long sleeves when it's cold so it's like all practical reasons and comfort reasons for modesty um Another reason, and I think, I don't know if we were talking about this before our episode or if we talked about this while we were recording, but um, insecurities, you know, everyone has something, I think everyone, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I think most people have something they're insecure about. People have something that they're insecure about. Yeah. So for me, I'm not really fond of my tummy. So usually I'll cover that up. Which is saying a lot because I wear completely mesh tops sometimes, but I'm still trying to cover up, you know, just a little tum. Um, for some people, it's their arms, so they prefer sleeves. Some people, it's their legs, so they don't like shorts. Um, <laughs> Lamont's got muscles. <laughs> He's wearing a muscle they're, shirt. They're today. moderate. They're moderate. Like, <laughs> really, really work on. Yeah. And, like, and insecurities are not just like a fat people, quote unquote, fat people thing. Like it's everyone. I know some people who look absolutely perfect in my eyes who are still insecure about stuff. Yeah. They might feel like they're too fat or too skinny. Yeah. Or too muscular. I know some people who are just like, oh, I'm too muscular. And I'm like, oh, wow, I wish I was too muscular. <laughs> but um. Yeah, so that, that's another thing for modest clothing is covering up an insecurity. And another reason for modest clothing is just because there are just people who prefer it. 
like they just prefer dressing that way they're not trying to cover up anything they don't believe in anything that says that's how they need to dress they just want to maybe it's the way their you know long skirt flows when they walk maybe they feel powerful or maybe it's the way the turtleneck accents their jawline and they think it makes them look better um I'm thinking of iconic, like, Audrey Hepburn in the turtleneck. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, wonderful. And she looks beautiful in it. Um, And, you know, while I was doing some of my research, I read some articles and some Reddit posts and saw a few TikToks about people, um, like, non-religious people or non-religious reasons for dressing modestly, who said that they felt sexier knowing that no one else except their partner saw what was under their clothes the like mystery was, yeah like it was like a sexy little secret for only them and their partners um i thought that was kind of cute <laughs> and a really like nice um you know non-religious reason for covering up um i know for me i'm not very modest but i don't like low cut tops um like, I just don't like the way cleavage looks on myself. Don't know why. I'm not covering up because I'm like, ooh, I didn't want people to see it. You know, just when I look in the mirror and I see cleavage, I'm like, eh, I'm just going to cover that. I don't like the way that looks. <laughs> but yeah, so let's cover reasons to not dress modestly. <laughs> it's hot as balls. Comfort. Exactly. That off. is what I was going to bring up. Like you said, I live in the tropics like you live in southern california like towards the desert area i could not imagine not wearing shorts every single day of the week (laughs) yeah yeah like it's so nice to be able to wear shorts i actually love cut sleeves like this Mm -hmm. because it feels good like like especially when it's hot like exactly to just like breathe you know Mm mm-hmm um, like I've even found as many like work appropriate tank tops as I possibly could because I'm like, I am not walking into that building to sweat all day. Yeah. <laughs> like, so that's another reason is comfort for the same reason why you would wear modest clothes for comfort in some places wearing something that's deemed not as modest could, you know, be a lot more comfortable. Um, another reason to not dress modestly is spirituality and beliefs believe it or not similarly to religious reasons behind dressing modestly there are people who think that not covering our bodies is the best way to honor their beliefs um Mm. yeah you know i didn't do as much research as i had intended to um but i know that you know what nudists are right yeah yeah i I mean like I jokingly say I'm a nudist at home because, like, I, like, if no one's around, I'm pretty much nude. Like, I'm not wearing a <laughs> lot to nothing, so. Um, but, yeah, so they have their own belief systems, their own values, their own virtues, as you said, into why they don't want to wear clothes. I know there are a lot of um, people who have, like, earth-based religions, you know, like, um, Oh, man, I can't think of any off the top of my Wiccans. head. Wiccans? Wiccan. But there's a lot more than that. Like, just off the top of my head, I can only think of Wiccan. But I know there's a lot of more, like, Earth-based, like, belief systems. Um, you know, and they feel like by them not covering up is honoring what they want to believe, showing that their sexuality or their not-sexuality is tied into their belief system. But I, uh, hmm, sorry. No, keep going. Keep okay. going. But like I was gonna. But for the same reasons for religious beliefs, I can't really speak on them, and my opinion doesn't matter because it's not. I'm not a part of their groups. I don't have rights to talk about it. I remember my uncle. So let, let, let's transition a little bit. So, okay. what about for like covering up or not covering up? for communication 
purposes. Mm. So I remember my uncle telling me a story about a tribe in Africa where if the women were uncovered and they showed their breast, it meant they were available for marriage. But women who were covered were married and they were not available for marriage. That's very And that's how that tribe communicated. Yeah. That's very interesting. No, I didn't stumble across that when I was doing my research. So, no, that I mean, that's another reason. Um, that's a good point. You know, Patrick's. I was telling my Patrick's mom this morning about what we were talking about today, and um, she was just like, you know, in Germany, no one cares. Like, people go down to the river to swim in the summer, like almost completely nude, like everywhere. It's not like, you know, in certain areas they do need to be covered up, but like they just go down. They're like, okay, I'm going to go swimming. Um, And she's like, you know, in Germany, it's completely different than the U.S. She's like, in Germany, there's no such thing as modesty. And she's like, in different countries, there's different ideas and societal expectations of how you should act in public, which is another like you know point for both why to dress modest and why not to dress modest um it depends on where you live (laughs) i know out here people don't walk around naked but you know people walk around in their bathing suits like all the time it's really weird when you walk into a store and they're like oh you need to put something on you just came from the beach you're just like why I, the beach is right i'm looking at the beach right there how are you gonna tell people to put on clothes like, right and i'm probably going right back yeah so. like i just came in here to grab a snack <laughs> that's weird yeah so um um i remember being a teenager and like i was like what is the difference between like girls going swimming in their bra and panties and boys going swimming in their boxers like to me there was like no difference i didn't care like it was like you're still covered like essentially they're covering the same parts just one's yeah. wear for underwear and one's wear for swimwear yeah and i think it could be interchangeable yeah i agree <laughs> too but um that is actually a very good segue thank you lamont into our next part of this conversation And that is the idea of sexualizing. Mm. Um, And when I'm talking about sexualization, I'm not talking about just women's bodies. I'm talking about all bodies. Um, But all bodies matter. (laughs) um, You know, but you will see, at least in uh, USA media, women's bodies are sexualized more. Yes. I don't know about in other countries. I don't know how it works. But, um, yeah, so when I talk about uh, sexualization, sorry, I'm talking about all bodies. But predominantly, you will see women being sexualized. And, you know, while I was watching TikToks, I was seeing a lot of, like, both sides of the stories. Like, people who dress modestly for one reason or another saying, like, well, how come because I dress modest, people think I'm a prude? How come they think that I don't enjoy being sexy or enjoying sex? And then on the other side, you'll see people who don't dress modest saying, well, how come because I wear a low cut top, I am, you know, seen as a sexual object? How come no one respects my right to wear a low cut top? Um, So, like, and my question is, like, why is this a thing? Like, why do we perceive people's bodies as sexual objects to the point where what they're wearing determines their worth? Yeah. And if that's something that you're struggling with and you recognize that you're struggling with, it's because maybe you were taught, like, this is okay and this is not okay. And also just the hangups. Like, once you realize, like, these are my hangups and these are my ideas about it and my beliefs, and you really examine them, maybe you can just start dispersing those. Because, like, just because, like, a girl or a guy is wearing something low-cut or revealing, it doesn't mean, like, they want to have sex with me or everyone. Like. Yeah. Uh, where where realistically how are they communicating that those are your ideas exactly like you're putting your ideas and your fantasies for some people onto this person who's just existing like 
maybe they do want sexual attention but like not from you <laughs> with that attitude right? um, yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe they do do it to get someone's attention but they don't want it from everyone yeah. and just because you like what you see or you gravitate to what you like it doesn't mean it's okay and so consent yeah consent 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 a lot of people turn to non-religious modesty because they don't want to be sexualized and i think that the biggest issue is over sexualizing people without their consent yeah um is that to say that you can't see someone walking down the street and find them physically attractive no it's impossible for most people to not see someone who you know fits your type and you're like huh i like that (laughs) i've seen people covered Mm -hmm. that i definitely found physically attractive yeah i've also seen people who are uncovered (laughs) that i find physically attractive so yeah. yeah so it's what you do with your attraction that like makes or breaks it um you know, if you're like staring at them, if you go to touch them without if, their permission, that's not cool. Yeah, like if you make inappropriate yeah. comments, cat calling, or like even sexually harass them in different yeah. ways. Yeah. Um, why, that's, why do people feel like they have the right to like cat call someone yeah. that might be showing a little bit more, or even like if they're not showing a little bit more, they're just sexy, and they're cat. Like, where do where does that privilege come from? Where does that like you think you have the right to do that? come from that that goes back to like consent like no one like keep your hands to yourself keep your words to yourself mind your business (laughs) right so i i think on an episode we mentioned complimenting right yeah um and if you're thinking you're being complimenting when you're catcalling you're probably not that probably you're probably making the other person uncomfortable but i guess like I, I've seen it two ways. I've seen a girl be catcall and she's like, oh, and then she's like, and she like struts, right? I've seen that. But I've also seen girls like turn inward and like, oh my gosh, like, let me get out of here. Like, I'm uncomfortable. Yeah. Right? Um, I think that varies person to person. But like, a general rule of thumb is be polite. Like, if you'd like, yeah. if you see someone attractive and you want to express your attraction, there's nothing wrong with trying to shoot your shot. Like, hi, I'm Leia. I love what you're wearing today. Um, how are you? <laughs> yeah, that that's appropriate. That's warm. That's friendly. And then if they have other insecurities, you don't know that. But um, those might arise in that moment. But that really has nothing to do with you. And so I think intention matters. Intention yeah. matters. And honestly, like... Well, st- saying that intention matters when you're cat calling what are you trying to do what is your intent behind that yeah and then just realize it it probably feels uncomfortable for a lot of people it starts going into like the inappropriate area is if they don't reciprocate right if i if i walk up to lamont i'm like hey how are you doing i really like what you're wearing today and lamont's just like oh thanks yeah Thanks. Bye. You know, and tries to walk away. I don't really have a right to be like, where are you going? Like, why don't you want to talk to me? These are things people have said to me. Um, you know, I'm like, okay, well, have a good day. He's not interested. Like, and that that's about as much as you can. And that's do. okay. Yeah. It's not always going to turn out. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> can we take a minute to talk about Miss Beyonce? Sure. Miss Beyonce has a beautiful body. Um, <laughs> if it's thin, if it's thick, right now it's thick delicious. Um, it's it's a beautiful body, and I remember me and my mom getting into a fight because she had said um, that she no longer respects Beyonce because Beyonce wore some something to some award show, whatever that was untasteful to my mom. And I'm like, so like, I probably wouldn't have thought about anyone else, but it was Miss Beyonce. So I was like, I'm like, let me come to my diva's rescue. Hold up. And I was like, so you're going to dismiss all the hard work she does for women all around the world, abuse women um, and children, um, everything, because 
you don't like the way she dressed at a VMA performance. Seriously? And so, like, so if we unpack that, there's judgment going on there, mm-hmm. right? So something, like, my mom didn't agree with something. It went against her beliefs. And so she lost respect for someone she did have respect for because of her beliefs mm-hmm. and her judgments mm-hmm. and stuff. And I think we as people tend to judge too much and we need to stop or realize we're having judgments think about why we're having those judgments and then retrain our minds to not be so judgy Mm -hmm. i agree that makes sense to me okay lamont (laughs) welcome to our activity (laughs) Ooh, activity time so earlier I had Lamont take a, it wasn't exactly a quiz, but it was kind of like a quiz, to find out what his season is. Ooh. <laughs> if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like a fashion color-based sort of like theory that because of the way your skin tone and your undertones and your hair color, eye color, blah, 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 Um, there are certain colors that look better on you and those different colors correlate to different seasons and you should keep that in mind when you're buying clothing something I learned about it in high school (laughs) Um, so I had Lamont do his and I did mine and Lamont according to the one that we had done is a autumn and I according to that am a spring I'm going to leave a link if anyone wants to check out the article we read and figure out what they are and see if that makes a difference in their wardrobe. Um, but today... Spring act- makes sense to me. Does it? You. Does it? Yeah, because I mean, look at your hair. Like, I'm not being mean. I'm not being mean. You look like an Easter egg. I do look like an Easter egg. Don't my, my hair color is like fading really bad. So like what was once neon green is like mint now. And what was once dark blue is now light blue. And then this is still black. But, um, yeah, so we, we look giving out Easter egg vibes over here. Uh, <laughs> um, but, yeah, so we are going to take a good old BuzzFeed quiz Ooh. and find out what our seasons are based on breakfast. Oh, okay. Let's do it. All right. So eat some breakfast foods from around the world to reveal which season matches your vibe, Lamont. Okay. All right, so pick a breakfast. Croissants, Ooh. pancakes, English breakfast, or arepas? Croissants. Croissants. Croissant. All right. Next breakfast, bunch. Pain Purdue, which is French toast, Danish pastry, breakfast burrito, or tamagoyaki, which is a Japanese omelet. Oh, my gosh. It all looks so good. <laughs> um, Leia, you're lucky you're in Hawaii, because I would make you buy me food after this if you were out here. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pick the breakfast burrito. Breakfast burrito. All right, next group, Biran Mari, which is a Korean omelet, crumpets, jiakias, or bacon, egg, and cheese bagel sandwich. Oh, my gosh. This, all of this looks really good. <laughs> I'm going to go. I, I've never had this before, but I'm going to go with the Korean omelet. That looks so yummy. <laughs> okay, next one. Um, Saltenas, porridge. Mangu, which is mashed plantains, or a lemon poppy seed muffin? Oh my gosh. And this is why I have a muffin, because I like muffins. <laughs> so let's go with the lemon poppy seed muffin. Okay, next one. Um, huevos ahogados, which is eggs drowned in salsa. A Taiwanese omelet. Buone, which is steak and eggs. Or long silog, which is sausage with garlic rice and fried eggs. Again, a lot of this looks really good. I think I'm going to want to try the Taiwanese omelet. I've never had it, but <laughs> it looks really good. Okay. Uh, next. Sfogato, which is Greek-style frittata. Uh, pa am toket, which is a tomato bread. Uh, I can't pronounce that. It's a waffle. Or it is Eggs a waffle. Benedict. Oh, my gosh. This is so hard. It's between the Greek-style... Frittata. Is that frijita? Frittata. And... The- whatever you said (laughs) and the eggs benedict oh my gosh you know what let's go fancy let's go fancy let's do eggs benedict all right um next one big pow which is a dumpling 
uh, Rashushi, which is a Polish apple pancake, uh, Pan al Raisin, or Huevos Rancheros. Ooh, Huevos Rancheros. Um, I think I'm going to go with Rachi, the Polish apple pancake. All right. Next, Apple Flap, which is a Dutch apple fritter. Uh, Pau de Deus, which is coconut bread. Potato pancakes or a scone. Oh, my gosh. The apple flap, Dutch apple fritter. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay. Um, I cannot pronounce that. Ventil T. Fridges. <laughs> a Dutch, Dutch style, style French style toast. French toast. Oh, um, my gosh. I love French toast. Pizzi Pana, which is Swedish hash browns. Maritosi, which is sweet buns with cream, or piglets, which look like little pancakes. Yeah, they do look like little pancakes. I'm going to go with the French toast for 100, Alex. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, next group, Granita di Mandorle, which is almond ice cream. Ba- Bauern and omelette. Omelette. Ba- Bauern omelette. I have to say the German stuff right before the Germans in this house kill me. Um, German omelette. Uh... Matzo brie, which is matzo fried with eggs, or chaptba, which is corn pancake. Interesting. Um, so I have to say none of these ones look appealing to me. <laughs> um, but I'm kind of feeling the like corn pancake. All right, I don't know what that is, but it does look pretty good. All right, Lamont, winter. You're just like Ooh. winter. You're a common, cool kind of person who doesn't sweat the small stuff. You love quiet nights with a cup of hot cocoa. Mm. Winter's cool. close to autumn-ish. It is close to autumn. <laughs> so it's a season right after autumn. <laughs> yep. What was your result, Leia? I don't know. I'm going to take it real quick right now. Hold on. Leia! <laughs> Yep, so I got the same result you got. I also got winter, which is very far from spring. So I don't don't know what's up with BuzzFeed. (laughs) Thanks for doing this activity with me, Leia. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for getting hungry. (laughs) Going back to our subject of modesty, that's pretty much all I have. I know this isn't a very, like, you know, like episode that ends with, like, a virtuous lesson or whatnot this is gonna kind of be left with sort of like an open-ended sort of situation i don't really have a formulated idea to express um i really just wanted to prevent prevent present everything that i had seen and let people make their own opinions so if you would like to share your opinions on our subject today go ahead and leave us a message or leave us some comments if you're watching on our YouTube. Because um, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about this. Um, yeah. And trust me, guys, I read everything. Like, I'm always <laughs> reading everything. If you comment, you will get a comment back. Even if it's not, like, right away. Like, yeah. I will comment back. I promise. To it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for myself, personally, this hasn't really changed anything for me. I'm still going to go ahead and dress how I want to. I'm still going to go ahead and let people dress how they want to. It doesn't really make a difference for me. Yeah, that was definitely one of the themes, I think, in our in our conversation. I think the other theme was be mindful of how you're treating other people. Yes. Treat people decently with respect. Don't just say whatever you want to say. Don't just grab or touch without permission or consent. Mm-hmm. Um, just be a decent, respectful human being. Watch what you say. Watch how you yes, act. Please. Please think about how other people may do stuff that, you know, they find important, even if you don't agree with it. And that's okay. I think that's okay. Yeah. Um, Pretty much let people be. Yeah. Just let them be. Everyone mind your own business. Keep your hands to yourself and your words in your head. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I like it. Today's life lesson is developing growth mindset. How many times have we said, I can't do it. I'm not good at this. I'm not good enough. These are examples of a fixed mindset and a negative fixed mindset at that. What happens, let's RCC. R 
recognize that we are having a negative self-talk moment. C, challenge that negative self-talk. C, change that negative self-talk into something more realistic or true, something a little bit more optimistic, such as I am learning or I am still learning. I'll keep trying. What can I learn to get better at this? Is this the best that I can do? Doesn't that seem a lot lighter than I can't? I suck, I'm not good enough? Let's practice. So if I'm thinking, it's too hard, that's a fixed mindset. I might wanna change it to something more along the lines of, with more practice, it will get easier. That's growth. If I'm thinking they are better at this than I am, that's a fixed mindset. I would want to change it, challenge it and change it to what can I learn from this or what can I learn from them? That's a growth mindset. One more. If we're thinking I give up, I'm done, I can't do this. Growth, that's a fixed mindset. A growth mindset will think, I'm gonna try this a different way. I'm gonna come at this a different angle. This didn't work, but it could work like this. Let's be kinder to our hearts, our souls, and let's grow. And that is today's Life Lesson.